Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. Looking back at this deck, I am just stunned by how terrible it is. Um, these two divine favors uh, just, just hurt to look at. So I would be pretty content to make it to one win. I'd be thrilled to make it to two wins so that I can finish my daily quest. Um, that, that's, that's my goal for this one. I have a feeling we're going to be starting a new arena, though, before this video is out. This just... This draft did not turn out well. If I sound weird, it's because I'm actually sick. My my throat is... It doesn't hurt, but it's, uh, it's just a little bit hoarse, my voice. So hopefully I'll make it through the end of this video. I'll try not to yell too much. Oh, man. Whew. Divine favor. Such a Such an ironic card. Because the biggest favor it can possibly do is not get drawn. Alright, we're at uh, Meerkat Storm, which is a sound mage. Very annoying, especially as a paladin, because the mages can just shoot down your recruits like no tomorrow. Not a terrible opening hand. Shielded mini bots a very irritating card to deal with when it drops on turn two. Especially if you don't play anything on turn one. So we'll see if she does or not. She mulligans her two middle cards, so she might have a play that she kept. Dancing Swords. Well, against mages, this card's a little bit iffy because it does die to Frostbolt plus Ping or just a Flamethrower. So, uh, could be, could be trouble. I guess, you know, it's an interesting question whether it's better to have, um, hmm, I'm actually going to play the Raptor. The reason I'm going to play the Raptor is although it does die to Frostbolt, it hits harder, so it's more likely to be able to kill something with the help of the Argent Protector. I feel like it's worth it to go for that. This guy's solid later on as well, but this one can help me achieve tempo early on. Arcane Missiles, well, 50-50 chance. She has the coin. She can coin to ping, finish this off. There's the coin. She's flipping it. Yep, she's going to do it. Well, it's good. I mean, the wor the alternative would have been that this would have actually died to the arcane missiles. That would have obviously been worse. Instead, at least it got to use the arcane missiles up and her coin in her second turn. So, oh no, it's not too bad. Now, for the three drop, do I play the swords or the cobra? I'm going to go for the swords, but if I didn't have the Argent Protector, I probably would have gone for the cobra here. I just like the idea of getting the, the bigger stats down and maybe saving the cobra for a little bit later. Next turn, I can play this onto my swords, hopefully, which will still be alive, and then the shield the minibot. She flamethrowers here. That would be annoying for sure. Frostbolt's not as bad, because Frostbolt doesn't instantly kill this. Aha, uh -huh, she doesn't have the flamethrower. Perfect. Okay, so I have a couple of options. I can put a Divine Shield on this in order to um, make it take basically two less damage killing the Berserker. Then I can also play Shielded Minibot. Then I'd have a 4-2... No, a 4-4, a 2-2, and a 2-2 with Divine Shield, which is actually pretty good. Alternatively... I could play this and just let this thing get damaged. Then I'd just have a massive 3-5. And it would use up my most expensive card, which would help me have more flexible turns later. Yeah, let's do this. I'm not sure it's the right play, but it's the play I'm going to make. I really just like getting a 3-5 down on turn 4. She can kill this with Frostbolt now and go up a card, but on the other hand, if she Frostbolts, it's half her mana. She will have then seven cards to my five, soon to be six, but I'm going to be ahead on the board at this big three five with backup from the protector. Then on my next turn, I'll be able to play the Cobra and be able to kill any five drops. So I'd actually say that I'm doing pretty well. She didn't really do anything early on, and I had a fast start. So here I am ahead on the board, which is walking down the only road I've ever gored. Anyway, uh, which is good as a paladin, because, you know, if you lose board control as a paladin, things just get real bad real fast. Ha, Cone of Cult. So she didn't actually have... The Frostbolt that she would have liked to have, she had the Cone of Cult, so she's going to threaten to finish this off next turn. I think what I'm going to do here is put a Divine Shield on this preemptively and drop a Cobra. So now she can't ping this to death. We're still two turns away from Flame Strike because she did use the coin. And I've got this massive board advantage. Does she have a Mind Control tech? That would be the question. Stampeding Kodo would be alright if it killed the Cobra. There's quite a few cards she could have here that would be really good, but... Um, I'm liking my chances. I'm going to get to play Muster for Battle, perhaps, if I want to next turn. And um, they'll live one more turn before Flame Strike hits. 
Unless, of course, she has a Blizzard, which would suck. She could very well have things like lots of Flame Strikes and Blizzards because she hasn't played anything all game, which increases the odds above average levels that she is holding on to expensive cards. And, of course, the most likely expensive card is that Flame Strike. What's nice about my board here is it just doesn't really work very well for her to use Polymorph or Fireball. So she could be choking on a lot of those as well. That's what I'm hoping is the case rather than Flame Strike, because of course Flame Strike will reset me in a couple of turns um, before I'm able to, to get too much damage. That Kona Cold stopped me from dealing 7 damage, which is kind of a big deal. So, um, Alright, so she plays that, and she doesn't get lucky. It would have killed any one of these, instead it kills nothing. So, let's think about this. We have a couple different options here. I could just trade the swords for it, or I could get greedy and use the sorcerer to kill it. Um, man, I really would have like a big six drop to drop here. I don't, unfortunately. So I could play muster for battle, but that would fill up my board. I could put a divine shield on top of this dude and not kill the bomb lobber to prevent this from getting pinged to death. That would delay her acquisition of her card. I'm gonna save muster for battle. I don't think I need to spend it right here. I don't really need the weapon. I mean, if with the weapon I could kill the bomb lobber through Argent Protector, but, um, let yeah, me. here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna let this guy drop to one health. I'm going to hit her in her fat face. And I'm actually going to protect the Cobra because I don't have anything big. So what I really need is to have this Cobra live. So that, um, in I, I won't, like, just fall over and die if she plays a huge minion of some sort. So now she can play Blizzard, that would kill just about everything, but it's a rare card, I'm hoping she doesn't have it. This is a lot of damage, this is, well, say she pings this to death, this is 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 12 damage. 13 if I want, 15 if I want. No Blizzard. Alright, she gets one of these, which means that my Recruit, and my Sorcerer, and my Dancing Swords are all gonna die. She silences off the Cobra, which is very irritating. But the Owl is gonna die to the popping of the Ghoul. She screws up here. That really makes no sense to ping the swords, because they were gonna die to the Unstable Ghoul anyway. Should have pinged off um, the Protector or the other Protector, so that uh, it would have... When the Ghoul popped, it would have killed them. Now you might say, well, Boris, maybe she's playing around Silence. But, I mean, first of all, Paladins don't have any class-specific Silence. It would have to be an Owl or a Spellbreaker. And when you're behind, you gotta play to your outs. So her outs are, I don't have silence. Okay, so we're gonna do that, because I have no other choice, really. And I'm gonna hang on to Muster for Battle and Quartermaster, because I can just do that next turn and get the huge combo. Do I wanna play the Abusive Sergeant? That would seem to be pretty pointless, because everything's gonna die to Flame Strike anyway, I should probably assume. And there we go. Okay, so she's gonna Flame Strike here. Play Muster for Battle and Quartermaster, and then if she has another Flame Strike, then I might actually lose. But if she doesn't have that other Flame Strike, if she's only got the one, well, then I should be fine. Hmm. Here's the card. Oh my god, she doesn't have a Flame Strike. Well, that's certainly lucky. Um, she had nothing all game and no flame strike, so really I can't complain about this at all in the slightest. Can I actually do my combo here? This would be three, four things. So that, uh, yep, that's fine. So we're going to do muster for battle, which is probably very frustrating for the opponent to watch. Can I kill her? Three, five, seven, eight. No, I can't kill her, so I'll just kill that off. Hit her in the face. She flame strikes me here. My quartermaster will live. I'll deal two, three, four, five damage down to three. Then if I find a true silver or something, I'll be able to win. She would have had to top deck flame strike because it's utterly inconceivable to me that she could have had flame strike last turn and not played it. This was a very weird game. Well, this is exactly the kind of game I needed, honestly, with my garbage deck. I didn't draw a Divine Favor, and on top of that, the opponent didn't play anything all game. Actually, if I had Divine Favor, it would be worth a bunch of cards, so that's kind of funny. 
Wow. Mage had nothing all game and no flame strike. You really have to uh, hand it to the cosmos for luck like that. I'm not even bitter that she's taking half a goddamn Ice Age to make her move here. Rather than conceding or passing the turn. Flick, 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 flick. Oh, yeah, that's not going to save her. Blizzard? Slow rolling the blizzard? No. Okay, that was a real good use of time there, lady. All right, la di da, da di do. Well played. Oh well, I avoided the zero win arena, which I was kind of afraid of might happen with this garbage deck, and now I got two chances to get that second win for this quest. I've also got to keep an eye out for opportunities to play those. Expensive minions because I need six more of them, although this deck doesn't actually have that many So I might not be able to finish that uh, only the mighty quest do, 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 do. do you guys know that basic cards are earned by leveling up a class also I hear that classic cards come from classic packs who the frickin knew? Okay up against a shaman, which I've been trying to get for like the last five arenas, but they just doesn't show up for me Deal with Link. Alright, this is um, not a bad opening hand here. Cult Master would be a bit greedy to keep, so I'm going to mulligan that, but we can play the Shield of Midibot on turn one with the coin, then the Protector, or a Recruit, depending, then the Ghoul, then the Yeti. I mean, that's a perfect curve, which means I'm going to lose, because whenever my hand is good, I lose. Actually, that's not true. Last game against that Mage had a good opening hand, and I won. Fantastic. So, let's go ahead and do... Shield of Minibot. Now, most classes can't really deal with a Shield of Minibot, and Shaman is no exception. It's you, Shaman's usual weapons of Snap, Crackle, Pop, Lightning Bolt, Rock Biter don't really work very effectively, and Earth Shield does not kill it. <laughs> Alright, a Monty Berserker is a good response because the Berserker just survives against it. Unfortunately, I don't have my um, Abusive Sergeant here, which would have been handy. We'll just have to play another Shield of Minibot and uh, wait and see what happens. So she can enrage her Berserker, but of course then I can just throw back in and kill it. She, oh, sorry, I played a sheet last game. Uh, he can do that. So is he fishing for spell damage? No, spell damage wouldn't have mattered. Uh, he gets the 1-1, which is actually really lucky because the 1-1 pops off the shield. That's unfortunate. But you know, I really can't complain about luck. I'm certainly getting enough good luck here. So I will pop both shields to just kill that Berserker. Start growing the ghoul, so a lightning storm wouldn't be the worst thing here. It'd kill my bots. It would kill this too. Either right away or with the help of this 1-1 totem. And it would overload him next turn and then I'd play the Yeti, but you know, it'd be anyone's game, but I'd rather not see that. If he doesn't have lightning storm, I'd be pretty content. Oh, alright, he's gonna lightning bolt. Lava shock. Oh wow. Deal two damage, unlock your overloaded mana crystals. That's a really cool card. Holy crap. I mean it's irrelevant here, but um, it was cool. Please don't be the 1-1 one, one again. Thank you very much. If he didn't flip this first, it would have dealt 3 damage the Lava Shock would have, and then he would have been able to keep his 1-1. One, one. So, slight misplay there on the opponent. Or by the opponent. Almost like me almost ending my turn before attacking. So this is actually a really good start again, so I had a perfect draw and the opponent didn't have the answers. So he's got 6 cards now to my 7, soon to be 8. It's looking good. This is a very cool card. So rare, unfortunately, but I can see this being useful in ranked. I think I've heard people talking about how good this is, and uh, now that I've seen it for myself for the first time, I'm quite excited about it. All right, so he's got the Tiger, which is certainly a great card. There's nothing I can do about it, though, so there's no point worrying. Do I play the Cobra? Um, no, because he's going to play Fire Elemental anyway, so we'll just do this. And I'm actually going to be a little bit cheeky here. We're going to make a Recruit. Recruit... Like I've said many times, playing a recruit is kind of like going up a card. I didn't really need this right now. I've got enough power on the table, so I just figured I'd get the extra little recruit here. I might regret not playing the Cobra. It's true, but I figured it was worth the risk here. Expecting a Fire Elemental, which I'll be able to kill with True Silver plus the recruit. He's probably going to kill the Dancing Swords for the card. And then I can use the Shielded Bot to kill the Tiger. Or I could actually, um, True Silver, the Fire Elemental, use the Recruit to finish it off, 
put a shield with my reigning Ximena on one of these guys to finish off the tiger and still get six damage through. Actually, could I kill him? Let's see. Uh, what do we got? We got four, six, eight, nine. Plus four is thirteen. Yeah, no, I don't. I can't quite kill him. Oh, Wind Fury. Okay, so this is um basically like a slightly better. That's actually really good. No, he gets to kill my Yeti and my sword. So no, that that would I'm not gonna I'm not gonna poo poo it. That was actually really good for him. Should have killed this first. It would have given him a card. Oh, so now I have to use the True Silver to kill this thing, and then I get five damage through, which is still pretty good. Well, not five, because I'm gonna kill this totem. I think I think it's foolish to not kill totems. All right, we get one of those expensive minions that I've been hoping for, and I'm gonna go ahead and play another recruit. My damage, you know, is less than if I'd played this Raptor, but this way I'm less vulnerable to a lightning storm, which still could happen at any time. This guy's nice. I'm going to waste most of the heal, but a 5-6 could help me seal away the game here. Alright, he's got 7 cards to my 8-9. I'm trouncing him card-wise, but if he can play big minions and a board clear, he's got a good chance to win this. Alright, Knife Juggler might finish off some of these recruits. 40% chance on any minion that he plays. Alright, so he gets two minions out of this. Let's see if he can kill both of the recruits. There's one, and not the other. Okay, that's good. Ah, oh, he's got another minion. Wow. Alright, 50, 50 chance. Ah, I get lucky, and it hits my creature that still has health. Alright, let's see if I can kill him. We've got um, four, eight, and nine damage. Not really worth going for, I don't think. So let's kill off the Dust Devil for sure. Let's kill off this. Let's kill that. And I think since he doesn't have a Lightning Storm, I am gonna just do this, this, and now I'm gonna play the Raptor. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Lightning Storm. I'm satisfied that he doesn't have it. So I'm going to get the extra damage on and try to finish this game off. Now he's got to deal with big creatures dying to the Cobra. He needs a Fire Elemental to finish it off. But he hasn't played Fire Elemental before. Oh, this is a new card. Could be Lightning Storm. Could be Fire Elemental. Stormforge Dex I'm not concerned about because it's still going to cost him damage to attack my minions. Which I'm pretty okay with at this stage since I'm trying to burn him out. So there we go. This basically dealt, you know, three damage for two mana to the face, which is fine. Okay, so here... Three, five, seven. Can't quite kill him. Should I kill the spider tank? Sure. We'll play the guardian, the urgent squire, and hit him in the face for four damage. Every bit of damage matters now. This five, six is a menace. He has to get rid of it. If he hexes it or whatever, I've still got five damage with these guys, and I don't care if he kills them with his axe because it's still getting the damage through. Does he have the hex? No, he's got an earth elemental. All right. So this is taunting. Does he have a hex? Oh man. So this is actually getting a little bit dicey because it's going to be difficult for me to get past this Earth Elemental. I've only got 5 damage on the table. And I can't obviously get th through. Alright, well, there's the Divine Favor. 3 mana for 2 cards, so it's an Arcane Intellect. That's fine. I'm okay with that. And there's no real reason for me to run into this Earth Elemental, so I'm just going to let my stuff lie. Let's see what he's got. He's got a good chance to win this now. 7 mana is still plenty. And, yeah, it's going to be tough. You no, know, because this buys him tons of time. Fishing for spell damage, perhaps? Finds it. Doesn't have a lightning storm, though, still, which is great. And this is a little bit risky of him to take the damage when he doesn't really need to. But I think it was a good move on his part because... If he had let that thing live, I could have killed his Earth Elemental. Alright. Well, let's get everything down here. Uh, should I pop the shield against that? I don't really see the point. So, we'll pass the turn. That Earth Elemental really bought him some time. He's got three cards here, which is plenty to deal with my little ragtag board of misfits. Pretty much any kind of taunting, any kind of um, big creature with 
or any kind of big creature. Uh, big creatures, maybe not so much, but like a few mid-sized creatures would be difficult for me. Taunting would be uh, bad if you could just remove a bunch of stuff. Even doing one-to-one -one would be in really good shape. And he has spell damage, too. More Wind Fury? Yeah, more Wind Fury. So that's actually, again, I'm embarrassed to admit, sort of solid here. Let's him um, either do a bunch of damage to me if that's what he wants, or kill a bunch of my minions if that's what he wants. I guess he's still playing it safe, playing the minions, which is smart. He can kill off a 1-1 one -one here, which it looks like he's going to do. Yep. Is he gonna heal this? Oh god, that would that would be the worst thing if he actually had like a healing for this. Maybe he has a panda he was thinking about using. Alarmabot, well that's a relief. Can I get a consecration? Consecration would be awesome. It would kill this, the two totems. This would then die with the help of a recruit. And then I could almost kill him after that. So consecration would be good. Really any sort of removal for this guy would be great. Hammer of Wrath, Cult Master. All right, I'll take it. So here we go. Just drop that in there and get a card. Dad, ah, find favor. Um, can't use it because of Lay on Hand, so that's just a dead card. At least I got it out of the way, I guess. Use of Sergeant. That is a remarkable draw because it allows me to kill off this uh, thing. Now, I did leave the Larmabot alive. Um, and you might say, well, it's a little bit crazy because you're letting him put the creature out. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, it's just the panda. So I actually guessed correctly. He had a panda. He was thinking about healing the Earth Elemental with that, but he left himself with only six mana. So maybe if he had, maybe he misplayed. Maybe he actually would have been able to um, heal up that Earth Elemental. Then he could have won. I don't know if it, how necessary it was for him to... Uh... What the hell? Uh, that's weird. I think he misclicked. I don't know how necessary it was for him to spend his other four mana. Yeah, he misclicked. He needed to obviously kill the Cult Master with that two damage, not the guy. But anyway, even if he had killed the Cult Master, I think I would have been fine. I could have killed the Totem, killed that. I had the Sunwalker and the Muster for Battle. Well, mission achieved. We made it to two wins with this Paladin. And that's clearing up my daily slot. And if I can get four more expensive minions down i'll finish off the other daily quest and i've got 23 minutes to go in this video so it might even happen those last two games though i gotta say you know they were remarkable in um how good my hand were how my hands were i just had the ideal draw pretty much. well not the first game but the second game i had the ideal draw all right up against the f f fellow paladin a demon ferret which is an amazing name this hand, unfortunately, isn't as good as any of the last two. And I think this is definitely... Oh, oh god, I misclicked. Wow, that was a terrible misclick. Jesus. I did not mean to keep this. I thought I clicked on it. Well, whoops. So, um, this is not something I would ever recommend doing, because while True Silver Champion is phenomenal, dealing four damage is even better now than it used to be, and it was always good, with the addition of several good four toughness, three mana minions, Definitely um, don't want to keep it because you might fall so far behind that it won't catch you up and then you're just screwed. Love to see him pass the turn here. Not going to happen. Awesome. Crap. Knife juggler. Oh, it's double crap because now he can kill my recruit. Possibly for free. Well, seal of light. This is why, even though it's a t like the worst two mana removal spell in the whole game, I'm still delighted to have it because, yeah, taking three damage sucks. Which I wouldn't do if it were Quick Shot or Dark Bomb or Frostbolt or Flamethrower or Wrath or, you know, any other two mana removal spell in the game. But um, it's better than letting him keep a Knife Juggler. Interesting that he coined it out without having anything to play afterwards. I'm guessing that was because, you know, he just figured it versus another Paladin, it was super essential to get board presence. Well, let's see if he's got the Abusive Sergeant to kill my Cobra off. It appears that he does not. So now I have an interesting choice. I could True Silver to kill a recruit, but that seems a little bit excessive. Then again, don't let Paladins keep creatures. All right, I think we're going to have to make an exception to the rule here. I mean, I could have killed this with Hammer of Wrath or True Silver, but I mean, the Yeti clearly needs to needs to get on the table. So now True Silver, on his part, will let him kill off my Yeti with the help of this recruit, but then I play the Fen Creeper, which blocks the True Silver, and it protects my Cobra as well. Letting me kill something big that he might play later. He didn't have a buff last time to kill the Cobra. Now he only needs a buff of one damage. Also, he has the mana to be able to play Dark Iron Dwarf. He doesn't have either. He actually plays this, which I'm delighted to see because this is just amazing. This allows me to kill off his minions without even having to, um, 
without even having to play True Silver Champion, which is ridiculously good. So I will avail myself of this option. My Cobra, you know, drops down to one health, so now an Elven Archer will kill it, say. But um, generally, it's not going to make a difference against a Paladin, whether you have one health or two health on your creatures. So he's got uh, eight cards, but I have seven, soon to be eight, and I'm way ahead on the board. So I'm just in, in the lead in a major way here. I've got card advantage with this and with this, and I've got another good four drop to play, so it's looking great. Now, he could always, you know, mind control tech me or, you know, dumb crap like that. Okay, well, here, really pretty obvious what I do. And I'm going to play the Shield of Minibot rather than getting a Recruit out because I do want to have this, uh, this body. I'm going to kill the Recruit with the Fen Creeper. Now, normally, you know, you'd want to keep your Taunt Minion as high as possible, but I don't want the Yeti draw dropping down to 2 health where it dies to Consecration. I obviously didn't want to lose the Cobra entirely because that would just be silly. So I figured that was the, uh, the best place to put the 1 damage. He's made, like, three recruits this game. He hasn't done anything. Let's see if he can catch back up. Well, I mean, a quality consecration would kill off everything but my shielded minibot. Same for... Ah, uh, Hungry Dragon. Interesting. So I do get a one, one, or one mana creature, which this is one of those cases where, like, I'm kind of okay with this because, I, I mean, this creature is not useless. Uh, it's, it's a 2-1, and I can kill this off with my Cobra. Now, is this what I want to do with the Cobra? Because I could hang on to the Cobra... I could go True Silver, and then, like, Shield of Minibot to kill this thing. Can I actually, can I kill him? Let's see if I can kill him. Um, four, seven, ten, twelve, sixteen, eighteen. I can actually deal 20 damage to him. Hmm. The problem with this is, if he does board clear, you know what, screw it. I, I can really board clear and freaking heal himself and like stop my weapon I just don't see that happening so let's just go for broke here I don't see any reason to play slow so if he board clears me I kill him with true silver he has to board clear and destroy my weapon or board clear and play taunt which is a tall order plus I have damage with this granted this doesn't go all the way down to zero and if any of my minions are alive the blessing of kings ensures the kill as well I just don't see how he can really get back from this he's too far behind now Well, he's got the Consecration. Okay. But he now needs to stop himself from dying to my weapon with three mana. Sure, he can kill that, and he can kill that, and he can kill that. But this plus my hammer will kill him. That's assuming he finds a way to stop this. Which is actually kind of hard, because a taunt can be silenced. He has to have an ooze. It's ooze or bust. Oh, well, he can play a Sun Fury Protector now. However, with a Sun Fury Protector... Oh, he doesn't have... I'm curious, though. If he had a Sun Fury Protector, would I have been able to kill him? Because I could have silenced one of them, killed the other, and then... Well, Shield and Minibot attack and Hammer of Wrath, but... Uh, if this is a Noble Sacrifice, yeah, if he had a Noble Sacrifice and a Sun Fury Protector, he could have actually lived for a turn there. Anyway, it didn't happen, so we just check for the Noble Sacrifice with that, which it's not. And now we hit him in his bad face. Well played, good sir. I hope you're not too dismayed. Alright, wow, I beat another Paladin. Didn't expect that to happen. Pretty sure my deck is worse than the average Paladin deck. On the other hand, he didn't do anything all game, so... That's been the moral of the story. Apparently, I can do pretty well if my opponents do nothing. So... That's 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 the um that's the reason people come to this channel is for those penetrating strategic insights. Did you guys know that first of all, if you need help building a deck, you can use the deck helper. Uh, that's just a, it's just a great tool. I use it all the time. Can't recommend it highly enough. But also, um, the key to winning is to have your opponents do nothing. Um, because if you play cards and your opponents don't play cards, you win. Generally speaking, I mean there are exceptions to that, but just generally, this is a terrible opening hand. So good thing I'm second. I can mulligan more cards. Pouring iPods. Nice fantasy name there, buddy. Oh god, Shield of Minibot, I love it so much. Priests, though, one of the few cards and classes in the game that can actually deal with it pretty well. With Shadow Word Pain. And he has his thing. Now, I could play this with a coin and play a recruit next turn, but I'm not quite that desperate to have board presence. I'd rather play the Shield of Minibot. 
and then coin into one of these amazing four drops on turn three. So let's see if he's got spells. Power word shield would be very annoying here. He could power word shield this, then pop the shields, and uh, well, there's lots of ways. Oh my gosh! So he basically that's a that's a fucking great way of doing it. Wow, Jesus. Jesus H. Christ. Alright, well, I don't see any reason to coin into a 4 drop. Let's just play the swords. This is an amazing start for him. He's up a card. He dealt with a shielded minibot incredibly well. Didn't uh, get screwed by his own pyromancer. Now a spell will deal a damage to this. And then he could finish it off. Or he's still just avoiding the pyromancer at all. He goes up another card. So he's up two cards now. And I'm just, uh, wow. I'm getting overrun. Divine Favor is so unhelpful here, because I'm so behind, so that's a dead draw. The Yeti will just die to a spell plus these two things. Balance Chosen, what the fuck? That's ridiculous, and of course this thing still lives. And it's huge. I don't have any good answers to it. This has been the most retarded game I think I've ever played. Well, at least in this run. So, um, yeah. Let's, uh... Well, coining into the Sunwalker is tempting, but if he plays a spell, it'll ping off the shield and the Sunwalker dies. I really gotta hope this Cobra can do it. And I don't see the coin being useful at all, so let's just play the Flesh and Ghoul as well for some extra good measure. Oh, man. This, this game is... This game is something. It's a real treat can't be beat another one oh my fucking God. wow that is the best shrinkmeisters i have ever seen seriously <sighs> he's gonna get to use it again oh my god that's crazy that is just crazy well let's we'll do what we can you know keep on trucking as they say New Orlay. So he can shrink Meister this. This guy will only drop to four health and he could heal it up. If he plays a spell, my recruits die. This is just some you know what I hate about Divine Favor the most is it looks like muster for battle and you're like, oh yay, and then you're like, no, no, not even close. Alright, so there's Mr. Shrink slot. And is he gonna heal this to stop me from true slivering it to death? He sure is. Oh god, this game is idiotic. Alright. I'll play the creeper and a shield bot. Kill this. Hit him in his face. So, a uh, spell of any kind will kill my recruit, damage this enough to die to the pyromancer. Mad Bomber hopefully hits that pyromancer. Oh, are you kidding me? You. That was just perfect. Killed my recruit and the fun creeper with that bomber. Well, oh, and he got that thing. Okay. Oh, wow. Just wow, as they say. Um. Well, let's do that. Kill that thing. Play this. I'm. Just, this game is so idiotic. There's just nothing I can do now. That beginning was ridiculous. The middle game was ridiculous. The end game is still ridiculous. There's just no end to how ridiculous this is. <sighs> Alright, so I'm actually being threatened with lethal damage here. So, we gotta play this. We gotta get a couple of cards. Cool Fen Creeper. You know, I might even be doing okay if it weren't for this fucking 9-9 nine, nine that Paladins have no way of killing. Well oh, well played. Does he have a silence? He has a mind control. You know, I've always, I've said at the beginning that this deck was terrible and I was expecting to do terribly with it and all that, but god, that was fucking retarded. Crap on a donkey. It's literally crap on it. Like, if you imagine a donkey with a piece of poop on it, that's what that game was. Just walking along, not even caring. <sighs> well, here we are, three and two, as to be expected. So, if I lose the next game, then we'll have to start a new run. 
if I win the next game, then I might either lose at the end of, at the very end of the video, but not have enough time to start in a new run, which is a great victory for this terrible deck, or I might uh, actually win a game and then drag it out one more time. All right, three, two, here goes, Hunter, Super Steppa. Man, those are some goddamn good Shrinkmeisters. Crazy. Alright, so here the correct move is definitely just to play the Abusive Sergeant on turn 1 against a Hunter. It's a no-brainer. I think holding on to it to try to use its battle cry is a big mistake. Please play nothing. Thank you very much. Okay. It's actually not a bad opening hand here. I get to play this. Granted, it doesn't have any synergy, but still, it's a card. I have removal if I need it, or I can even coin into this, and it's not the easiest thing in the world for a hunter to get rid of. Divine Protector, Arja Protector would be really nice here. Ah, uh, not a chance. Wait, I can actually kill this with Seal of Light. But no, that makes no sense. If I kill it with Seal of Light, I get to uh, keep a 2-1 on the table. If I kill it with a 2-1, I get to put a 2-3 on the table, which is obviously better. And Seal of Light restoring 4 health, you know, that could be useful against a Hunter to slow down the clock by a couple of turns. Look at this thing, we'll get to live, unfortunately. Quartermaster's a bit early. Oh, let's drop my good 4 drop. Now if he kills this, my 3-5 gets to kill his 3-3. Three, three. And then we could be okay. Is gonna reveal it? Is he gonna heal it? No, healing it makes no difference. Is he gonna kill this somehow? Hunter's Mark or something? That would be devastating, I have to admit. Ah, just a snap jaw. Hmm. What's funny is I can't even kill this thing. Um, even if I have a blessing of might on it, the thing still has so much health. Ah. Uh, Hammer of Wrath also doesn't let me kill that. So what I'm going to do here is accept defeat of a sort. Because basically, he does get to kill my 3-2 now. But, at the same time, um, this thing will be left with 4 health and I might be able to kill it with Dancing Swords. Let's see if he, he has a healing for this or a Houndmaster or something like that. It's a precarious situation here. A lot of these cards, like the Blessing and the Seal of Light, aren't the greatest thing in the world. He has a pretty mediocre fifth turn, just a Golem, which is granted a good three drop, but it's just a Golem and then Steady Shot. It's not the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. Alright, well, let's do this, and let's do this. Oh. So he can kill the Dancing Swords with his Golem, but then... The ghoul grows bigger. I screwed up though, I should not have kept the flesh and ghoul in the middle. That was leaving me wide open to explosive shot. Quick shot. Oh, such a good card. God damn it. And that thing to protect his golem. And I can't be Hammer of Wrath or Blessing of Mighted. Ouch, that sucks. So Muster for Battle is interesting because, I mean, that does stop me from doing the combo on turn 8, but I need to do something now. So I'm just going to play this. And now, you know, I can use Blessing of Might with this recruit and kill off that thing, at least. Let's see if he's got the dogs to kill off all my recruits. If he doesn't, then I do get to play the recruit and a quartermaster on turn 7, which could be strong if he doesn't have board clear for it. Let's see if he does. Dogs, do no, no dogs. Okay, so this thing would be scary, but I'm... Perfectly fine on health. My health is not that big of a deal here. Of course, I got the Divine Favor, which is spectacular. -o. But I have, you know, a bunch of 3 3s now. So do I get greedy and hit this skull and letting myself get damaged more? This thing is gonna hurt. I think I'm actually gonna preserve my health. But two damage is like an extra turn I get to live. So let's see if he's got the goods. He needs to deal 17 damage to me, so this drops me to 17, down to 15, up to 19. I should be able to hang on long enough to kill him. Let's see, though. I wonder. 
he's probably thinking, should I raise them out or try to fight fair? He decides to fight fair, which presumably means he's got a good way of clearing some of my board out. Okay. Not bad. Alright, yeah. Uh, the reason um, maybe so that they didn't quite hit the mark is because the things that come out of here aren't beasts, so they wouldn't have had charge from the rhino. Well, uh, let's think about this. So, can I kill him? Nine. Um, Eleven. Twelve. Let me think. This is two damage for two mana. This is, this is okay. So, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, seventeen. Not quite enough to kill him. Obviously, I don't want to race him with him with his beast having charge and all that. So, yeah, we'll, uh, do that. Fade away one of these guys like that. Um, Divine Favor can cycle for a single card that seems pretty pointless. Let's just put Blessing of Kings out. Him and his fat face. And should I hammer him? Is it hammer time? Five damage here. No. Should I get my card? No, it's not worth it to get the card. Let's just get an extra recruit on the table. And I hit him in the face one time. Alright, so let's see what he's got. He's got four cards. Obviously in a bit of a dangerous spot here. There's a 7-7 seven, seven to deal with. But there's just answers. You could have a big game hunter. Hunter's mark. Mind control tech. Okay. Well, that's really not going to do it. And he suicides himself, which is the honorable way out. Well, that was, that was nice. So we're coming up on 42 minutes. I think that would be a little bit of an early finish, but a good place to stop since we ended up doing very well with well, not very well, but comparatively well. Winning four games and losing one with a deck I didn't think was very good. Handicapped by no less than two divine favors. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, everyone.